Town Radio on Payton. And our musical guest tonight is Bright Club. And now the man that I would gladly take a bullet for, Mr. Ian Ray. Doing great, thanks. 
Thanks a lot for having me. No, thanks for coming down. We've been wanting to have you here for a while. We finally got you. How long have you been doing the radio show? Uh, actually, this January, we're going to be kicking off our sixth year on the air. Six years! Yeah. And uh, always with K-Talk? You always been on K-Talk? No, we actually we started with a small AM station in town, KLBB. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. These the oldies radio yeah, station. Yeah, we, we were you know, right in the right demographic. We were talking to uh, old people all night and then the dead at night, so it worked out really yeah. well there. Did you ever actually have somebody who used to call, who then had passed, call you from beyond the grave? <laughs> no, but I'm getting those calls now. <laughs> All right, let's start at the beginning. What made you get into the paranormal? You know, it was kind of thrust on me when I was a kid. Uh, my grandmother used to come visit me after she had passed away. Oh, geez, really? So, yes, yeah, so we had, you know, I had experiences growing up throughout my entire life. And then at about the tender age of 12, I had a Bigfoot sighting in Foley, Alabama. All right. Really? I uh, know, Alabama, Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, because there's a lot of big guys. Did I mention my grandfather had a hell of a still out there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so really, okay. So, at, so, and how old are you when you when you saw, when you done saw Bigfoot? Which is a horrible thing to say at the beginning of an interview to really establish your credibility. Yeah. Well, but, you know, hey, we're working here. We're all in a bar. What do we care? Um, so, how old were you by the time you'd seen Bigfoot? Cause this is pretty advanced stuff. Right. Well, I was about twelve years old. So you'd already seen your grandma. Yeah, who right. came to visit you. That's right. And then what kind of the tidings did she bring? Was it kind of a spooky? Ooh, well, you know, I, I have no memory of it because I was just a little guy. My uh, mom just used to come pick me up from overnights at my grandfather's, and she'd say, "Oh, did you have a good time?" I said, "Yeah, Grandma came and read to me last night." And my mom said, "No, I remember Grandma's in heaven." I would describe exactly what she was wearing. My grandmother was buried in a closed casket. There was only two people that knew what she was buried in: it was my grandfather and my aunt. And I, I had it nailed down to the fact that they had removed her fake teeth. Well, geez. I said it was funny. She didn't have all of her teeth when she talked. And, yeah. And, and they knew it all. So. Wow. Okay. Um. So now, so you're 12. You you have an experience like this. What makes you uh you know go into this as a field? I mean, is this, this is something you do professionally. This isn't something you're just like some random guy out doing it. This is your job. Right. Right. Well, you know what? I, just having all these experiences. I grew up in the years when you know in search of a winner. Yeah, I love that. Scene. Right. Yeah. Sightings and all these fantastic shows about the paranormal. I used to read everything I could get my hands on uh, about ghosts, UFOs, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena. And as an adult, I did radio in college down in Winona State. Okay. And, uh, hey, we got anybody here from Winona? Woo! All right, trying to reach out to our Winona demographic. I guess not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I went to college at Winona State and worked at their radio station, and then uh, lo and behold. Twenty years later, my, my best friend and the producer of our show said, "Hey, we got a spot at the station. We got this crappy real estate show, a crappy gold show, and a crappy vitamin show. You want to come to a crappy radio yeah. show?" Yeah, I'm in, buddy. Sign me up. Wow, that's yeah. that's good. So, <laughs> and also, that's a hell of a homer you Thank just you. did right there. Yeah, well, we all have our skills, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so now, what uh, weird doors is this open for? Because I mean, I assume there are a lot of crackpots around the state who now know you. On a first name basis, know what you look like and know where you live. How much does that screw up your day to day well, existence? Especially, it doesn't help when I'm driving around in a purple PT cruiser with the words "Darkness Radio" on the back. Window. That's kind of advertising. <laughs> yeah, yeah. get you out there. But uh, you know, it's, it's been great. It's given me a lot of exposure. I've had the chance to uh, uh, appear on episodes of Paranormal State on the A and E channel. Okay. Uh, Ghost Adventures Live had me as one of their hosts on their uh, seven-hour episode really? last Halloween. Okay. And then I just did an episode this year with their Rolling Hills group and went out to New York and, and did a uh, ghost on. Same asylum. Wow. Now, what do you think about? I mean, right now, I mean, we had um, cakes for a while on cable. Sure. Uh, we had like kitchen stuff for a while on cable. Now it's all gone towards ghosts. Since you were uh, into this back before them, what do you think about this new saturation of the ghost market? I'm just waiting for paranormal cake shows about porn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, does this add legitimacy? <laughs> Sorry, I got stepped on your lap. There. No problem. <laughs> I know you're oh, there it was. Um, and so, I mean, does this, does this add legitimacy to your craft, or does this, do you get lumped in with a bunch of yokels? You know, I don't claim to be an expert in the field. My whole idea with the show is I wanted to learn along with my listeners. So yeah. I do very little research on the guests, and, and you know, so that way when I'm asking questions... Kind of like our show. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, so that way we learn along, and yeah. hopefully I'm asking the questions Precisely. that the audience wants to know. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, uh, you know, it's, it's been cool doing that. So I, I don't claim to be this legitimate, you know, scholarly uh, ghost hunter. I'm like everybody else. You put me in a scary situation, and I'll poop my pants like anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just did. Yeah. Um, now, uh, let's go through it. Uh, okay, so you've actually gone out and done, like, readings at houses, or what, what right. do you call it? Investigations right. at a house. Like, what kind of stuff do you bring along? Do you have a crew? Well, you know, I, I, 
I go out with different teams around the Twin Cities, but there are times that, that listeners. Well, first off, how many teams do we have in the Twin Cities? Oh, uh, you wouldn't believe it. I guess I'm not. Sure. It's probably there's probably a good seven to ten just in the Twin really? Cities area. Really? I'll be damned. Yeah. Okay. Twin Cities Paranormal is the first one to jump to mind, but there's uh, Minpig, which is my favorite. M N P I G. I don't know if that's the right name you want to start off with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's uh, there's just a, a big diverse group of, uh, of ghost hunters all over the state. As a matter of fact, there's a group up in Duluth who dresses in Ghostbusters regalia to go in and, and do investigations. Wow. Uh, what yeah. a bunch of losers. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh... <laughs> I'm joking. A couple of members of our crew are part of, uh, get, get, never mind. And then just moving on. But, um, uh, we'll get called in. You know, 95% of the times that we get called in, it's something that can be very easily explained away. So most yeah. of the time I try to do the interview with the phone or I'll go in one-on-one and just get a chance to see what they're experiencing. And I can usually answer the question for them within about an hour of being in their house and see yeah. what's going on with their, with their stuff. So uh, most of it's logically explained away. Yeah. No things. People take pictures of ghosts and they're just dust, man. You right, use exactly. Flash, it's freaking dust. You're going to get dust. But, you know, the big it's thing not is it's there's dust. all these noises at night. And that's yeah. when we're at our quietest. The neighbor's not out. The dog's not barking. Yeah. Like, nobody's mowing the lawn. And we're quiet. Well, in the middle of the night, that's when the house settles the most. Of course. Things are shifting and changing. We hear all that all day long. But we got TVs blaring. we got cars going by. People mowing the lawn. So it, it distorts all that background noise. Uh, and, and once you get people to realize that these are just normal parts of your home, this is this is all natural. You know, the whole idea of going out is not to spook people; it's hopefully to give them an answer so they feel a little better about living in their own house. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. And on the rare occasion we face something, we just you know, then you got to get into it a little bit deeper. Yeah. And before we get to that, why is it that ghosts only show up at night with with uh, like low light cameras? Like, why don't you see ghosts? Like, <laughs> they have, good, they have good agents. Yeah. Exactly. Like, why don't you why don't you have like ghosts happening in the day? Like, ooh, or, or, it's all houses. Like, why doesn't like you know the tree haunted? It's hitting you with acorns. It's actually, <laughs> actually it is. There's there's kind of there, there's lots of different hauntings all over the world that take place during the day. And as an investigator, we'll go whenever the haunting is taking place. Yeah. You know, if Grandma comes into the kitchen at 3 in the afternoon, we'll be there at 2. Damn straight. Right. Yeah, but, because, but you know, you see it, it's always like, the, 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 it's like a little crappy camera, and like, ooh, there's a shadow. Well, no crap, man. Yeah. yeah. You're it's in like, the dark, dumbass. Exactly. <laughs> Why are we looking for evidence at the one time it's impossible to see a damn thing? But that's that's all deal. I'll tell you exactly what it is. And, and I'm friends with the guys from all the different shows, and I'll tell you, too. It looks good on TV. Yeah. It gives you that, that closed-in claustrophobic feel of everything in that night vision camera. Yeah. As you're stalking around in the dark. Because truthfully, if you and I are just bumbling around in a bar here in the light <laughs> looking for ghosts, the only spirits we're going to find are on the other side exactly, of the bar, yeah. right? And I've seen, I've seen people do that all the whole time. All right. So up and above your wits and logic, what kind of tools do you bring along with you to see what, what's going down? I'm pretty plain and simple. I use an audio recorder. I use a video camera with night shot. Um, and then I will use a, a regular camera. And that's just to kind of get the lay of the land, understand it. My, my biggest tool is I use a uh, notebook and a pen. Okay. Just to take notes of everything that I experience in the house and, and notice about the house. Yeah. Because, again, there's a lot of, oh, I feel cold breezes all the time. Well, you've got a hole in your window that yeah. you sit next to exactly. it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> there's your yeah, ghost. Got a crappy, <laughs> drafty house, man. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what to tell you. Um, now, let's, uh, okay, now, um, what are the dangers of doing something like this? Because uh, do you ever find, I mean, because you're going into something that's we don't understand. It's like, you know, sure. We, we can be jaded about it as much as we want, but we're opening up a Pandora's box. Can you have something kind of follow you around? I mean, what's your family think about this? Well, you know, I keep my kids separate from this. I have seven kids. Jesus. I'm paranormal enough, yeah. Yeah, man. So, uh, so, so obviously, I'm the wrong guy to ask about protection on a ghost hunt because I don't know what protection means. <laughs> Thank you. Remember to tip your waiters and waitresses. Yeah, hey, right <laughs> um, you know, th there are dangers. Actually, I'm, uh, the big joke in the in the paranormal field is I'm more afraid of the living than I am of the dead. Okay. We get called into some homes where people are just completely wing nuts. Yeah, where it could be an episode of Ghost Hunters or Hoarders. Or a little bit of both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and we get into those situations. But the, the real danger is a lot of these people are out there watching and, and uh, kids are out there doing it. And they're sneaking into old abandoned buildings. Well, what you don't realize is there's homeless people, there's drug addicts, there's you know uh, people that are set up in there that you don't want to run into in the middle of the night. Yeah, I'd right. much rather face the funky phantom than walk into the Hell's Angels club dinner. You know? <laughs> uh, so I, I'm just that's what unnerves me more is people getting into places they shouldn't be in dark situations. As far as paranormal attachments, actually, that's what our show is about tonight. We're going to be oh, talking okay. about that. And you're on, you're on, you're on like an hour or so. On Eleven o'clock to midnight. Every wow, night. all right, so you're going to have a quick ride. Oh yeah. Um, I'll try wrapping this up then. No tell me more about. Tell me about your book. 
Well, our book is, uh, I, I co-wrote with uh, Patrick Burns from the TV series uh, uh, Haunting Evidence on True TV, yeah. and Marley Gibson, who's a young adult teen author. And it's a book, basically, it sets up everything from how to set up a paranormal team to what is fake evidence, you know, yeah. like you were mentioning orbs, to uh, how to protect yourself on a paranormal investigation, to getting access to locations. So we kind of cover everything. Uh, it's, it's a book written for everybody, but the publisher thought it'd be a good idea to make it a teen's book. <laughs> so. uh, and what's the name of it? It's called The Other Side. A teen's guide to ghost hunting in the paranormal. Wow, they were they were charging you by the word, weren't That's they? Right. That was nice. <laughs> All right, uh, again, where can you find us? Wherever fine teen books are sold? Or out in the back seat of my car right now. Yeah, that's what we got. Oh, we got. Uh, we got a couple of copies of your fast. Uh, he's brought some for everybody who came out tonight. So round of applause for Dave Schrager. Oh, Driving there very quickly, starting now. <laughs> City runs. All right, everybody, a man who is no spirit, no uh, no nothing. He's just real. He's here for us, and we love him. Ladies and gentlemen, Haiku Jim. Hey, everybody. How's it going, Sam? Here's my deal. I was um, at in the waiting room at the dentist's office. I'm paging through People Mag, and uh, there's like a biker guy next to me. And I read the story, and I showed him the picture, and I said, you know, more negative press. People like Lindsay Lohan give drugs a bad name. Yeah, know? true. And I, and, and I thought, wait a minute. And the guy just you know, shrugged and didn't say anything. I said, God, there's a haiku there. So I grabbed, <laughs> a, I grabbed a pencil and a paper and I wrote, more negative press. People like Lindsay Lohan, seven, give drugs a bad name, five. So in other words, you know, so in other words, this I'm man's thinking, a machine. Yeah, I'm thinking haikus. I'm talking to strangers in haiku. <laughs> I'm writing haikus at four in the morning. And then going back to bed, which hasn't happened since last night. So, in other words, in closing, I'm looking for a, a good psychiatrist. If you have a number, please give it to me after the show. Thank you, and good night. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Jim. And I hope you recorded that because everything he said was in 575. It's eerie. Screw it, dude. Alright, uh, we have we have a little something we threw together for you. We have a rolling. Um and it might actually teach something some of you guys at home a little something about the, the birds and the bees. Let's take a look, shall we? Shall we? Son, I I think it's time that you and I had a little talk about well sex. Now I know it's a little uncomfortable, but frankly if my dad had taken the time to have this talk with me, I wouldn't be sitting here with you right now. Oh, I, I don't mean to say that I haven't cherished every moment I've ever spent with you, but frankly, having children isn't a good idea, especially if you're as young as your mother and I. But I know that you're going to have sex. Maybe you already have, and if you have, well, I uh, hope it was good. So, son, the important thing is that I want you to be safe, and that's why I'm going to show you how to use a condom. Now, in this demonstration, I'm not going to use an actual penis, and that's why I brought this banana. Now, your organ may not be as large as a banana, but that's normal. Didn't stop me from marrying your mom. Well, anyway, when you're ready to make love to your partner, she should be ready too. And that's important. You could get yourself into a lot of trouble. So we take the condom out of the wrapper and, uh, and it goes right onto the banana. Of course, you won't be using a banana. Well, you could use a banana, but that's a more advanced lesson. But uh, that's what we do with it. Pinch the top of the prophylactic. Did you know that's what they're called? Prophylactic, that's their proper name. And now, you're ready to make love to your consenting partner. So do you 
have any questions. What the hell is wrong with you? I'm sure your granddaughter is never going to eat another banana as long as she lives. Might want to try the speech on my brother. We'll see you at Thanksgiving. Later. Well, your brother didn't really seem to care for my little talk, but I think it's important. And so, you've seen the demonstration, and now you're ready to make love to your partner, whomever or whatever that may be. Gee, thanks, Pop. I love you. And then we twist it on you. Hey, my mic is on? Hey, sure, why not? Hey, everybody, um, I hope you've enjoyed the show thus far, have you? Yeah! Well, damn it, it only gets better. All the way in the basement of Johnny Dirk Zombie Dead. Put a rousing round of applause in your mouth, out your... Oh, it sucked. We can't redo it, though. It's live. Hey, everybody, it's Fight Club! Yeah! We got a 
another one. This one's called Money. And we all have a love-hate relationship with that one, so some of us, some, some of you guys can feel this. <laughs> Yeah, we got the moves to prove do, do, do. Got homies behind us, and now you're with your crew, dude. Oh, we go close and ship proper. Seems gears between my ears spin like rock. Just go fast to the other side of town. The other side of me, the other side of hell. Wow, wow. This big ship disappears up into the clouds. Did we get so hot? Did we get so fly? Did we get so right now? of merchandise and service when you patronize these good neighbors. Drinking with Ian is proud to be sponsored by gold medal winner UV Vodka. No matter if it's UV Blue Raspberry, UV Red Cherry, UV Green Apple, UV Ivory Vanilla, or UV Orange Vodka, UV flavored vodkas offer a premium product without the high price tag. Please visit uvvodka.com for additional information and recipes. No beer in the Midwest has a grander brewing tradition than Grain Belt. For over 100 years, Grain Belt has been the beer that fathers have passed on to sons and friends have passed amongst each other at local bars and watering holes. It is a beer with tradition that spans generations, which is why it has become legendary, both here and across the country. Next time you go out, ask for a premium. EMI Audio, the Twin Cities' premier resource for DJs, bands, and drinking with Ian. Rentals, sales, installation, and repair of DJ gear, PA systems, and effect lighting. A family-owned business for over 35 years. Visit emiaudio.com for all your audio, video, and lighting needs. A portion of Drinking with Ian is sponsored by The Onion, America's finest news source, and The AV Club, bringing you reviews and commentary on the arts and entertainment scene. Available at newsstands throughout the Twin Cities and online at theonion.com and avclub.com. Pizza Luce proudly supports Drinking with Ian. Free delivery until 2.30 a.m. weekdays and 3.30 a.m. weekends. Download our menu at www.pizzaluce.com. Drinking with Ian is nothing without our sponsors. Please support them. Sit, Ubu, sit. Good dog. 